Mr. Jules, are you ready for the season finale? Welcome back to another episode of L Squared, better known as Lips and Liquor, where we talk about all things alcohol, the fermented, the distilled, and everything in between. So go on ahead and mm, 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 smack those lips until the weekend. Before we get into this review, you already know I got to give you the straight fun facts. So let's go ahead and get into it. Sit back, relax, and pay attention. You just might learn something today. Fun fact, whenever you're storing your wine, you wanna make sure that you're storing your wine on its side laying down and not standing up. And that's only because whenever your bottle of wine is standing up, the cork could actually dry out and dwindle and it could get into the wine, tainting the whole bottle of wine. And nobody wants that. Let me give you a pro tip of the day when pairing your wines with your foods. The richer, heavier foods should be paired with the richer, heavier wines, and the lighter wines should be paired with the lighter foods. So, for example, if you're serving red meat, you typically want to go for a red wine, versus if you're serving fish or chicken, you want to go with the lighter wine. And for your desserts, you always want to go for the sweeter wine. All right, y'all, so it's time for the big reveal. We started the season off with this company, so it's only right that we end the season with the same company. Today's review is going to be on Brown Estates 2018 Zinfandel. <laughs> this bottle actually doesn't have um, like the normal blurb on the back. The one thing it does have is the scarab. I'm, I'm hoping I'm saying that right, but it's an ancient symbol of good luck and long life. And this bottle is also 15.2% alcohol by volume. Oh, this is about to be strong. <laughs> Woo. So this is personally my favorite segment of the show. It's out. Bruh. Y'all, get down. Bruh. Down. A few moments later. All right, like I was saying, this is personally my favorite segment of the show. It's time for our S squared and T squared. And if you're new to L squared, S squared is our sight and smell. T squared is our taste and texture. Cheers. <coughs> okay, I'm not even going to hold you. I thought Zinfandel was always white. <laughs> I've never had a darker red Zinfandel, so this is going to be interesting. Okay. Okay. Smell. Ah, it smells like a red wine. I think I need to say how much I hate red wine because I've said it all season, but I hate red wine. Sight spread. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and go into this taste and texture. Oddly enough, it tastes like other Zinfandels I've had before. 
Still has that red wine dryness. <coughs> This is an interesting one. Not quite sure if I like it. Not quite sure if I dislike it. Uh, one hour later. Let me just. Uh, <laughs> it is on a thinner side. It's not as thick. So I'm guessing it's not as full body. Uh, the flavors that I take from this are, I do get a hint of cherry in there. Sipping a lot of it is uh, not ideal for my taste buds. So. Ah! All right, so on the lips and liquor scale one through 10, I definitely, I... I think I'm gonna give this a four. <gasps> I don't, I don't know. It doesn't have an aftertaste, which is a plus. No, I, I changed it to a five because it doesn't have an aftertaste. As far as the actual taste of it, like it's not a bad taste, but it's not a taste I would want every day or often. Bruh. I don't know. Oh, you hear that? It's time for the L squared hour. All right, welcome to the L squared hour, where we are going to turn our Brown Estate Zinfandel into a nice little refreshing sangria. Mmm. Okay, so now on to assembling our sangria. We're actually gonna go ahead and just make a full picture of it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our Brown Estate 2018 Zinfandel. We're gonna pour the whole thing in there. After that, we're gonna go in with our Lard's Applejack 86. I know y'all remember that episode. And we're gonna do about, mm, Let's do about a cup and a half. You know the deal. Our Martinelli's apple juice. And with Martinelli's, we're going to do about four cups of this. Then we're going to go in with a few slices of this juicy palmello. Ooh, exotic. The sangria about to be nice and exotic. After we go in with our few slices of palmetto, we're going to do a cup of peaches and a cup of mangoes. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and give our sangria a stir. After we get this all stirred up a couple times, we're going to go ahead and put this in the fridge for about 30 minutes to an hour. That way all of our fruits and flavors can just settle and blend together. And then we'll come back for a nice little taste test. Okay, our sangria is ready. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. with a nice wedge of our pomelo. Cheers. Mm, hold on now. It's giving exotic. It's giving springtime. It's giving lips and liquor. Oh yeah, this is really good. This is something that I can legit sip on the patio 
people watching, you know how we do during the summertime, during the springtime, we sit on the patio, people watching and not even going to hold you. I don't know if it's because I haven't eaten today, but I'm feeling it. Yeah, I'm feeling it. <laughs> Cheers to another successful season of Lips and Liquor, y'all. Go ahead and try this at home. And when you do, make sure you do the hashtag L Square Sangria. Look, Lips and Liquor is coming back for the summer, okay? Don't y'all worry. And I got a little surprise for y'all. But also, before the next season, make sure y'all rewatch these seasons. And y'all know Lips and Liquor like the back of your hand because you never know when I'll be doing another giveaway. <laughs> All right, y'all, from my lips to your cups. Put those L's in the end. Give it a big kiss. Mwah. L squared out, baby. Mm -hmm.